or my good friend, Jishrina Arshad, uh, VS Strategies and Mindshare. <laughs> She's a little bit frazzled, so be kind. <laughs> but you'll find now it requires exceptional people skills, despite the stereotype. Now, how many of you have seen this stereotype about programmers or techies? They want to program, they want to be left alone to program. But it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> You're admitting to the stereotype. So you don't like politics. He's the wrong color, though. <laughs> You don't like people who are not as smart as you, you kind of look down on them. <laughs> <laughs> You're really not helping here. I'm trying to defy <laughs> And so in a nutshell, you're thought to be antisocial or simply socially awkward. So I know you agree and you agree. Does everyone agree with the stereotype? Are you antisocial? Are you socially awkward? Am I antisocial? <laughs> yes. Yes? <laughs> you're in, a lot of people find it uncomfortable to network in a social situation and meet new people. But let's look at some of the more successful techies, like Steve Jobs, for instance. He's known to be a great innovator, a great leader, and a great networker. One of the key things he said was, creativity is connecting things. And you look at his innovations, iPads, iPhones, it's connecting with people. And he even said, innovation is meeting up with people in hallways. So clearly he's a believer that success comes from networking and connecting with people. Mark Zuckerberg. In the social network, he was depicted as a stereotypical antisocial geek. But in reality, according to those who researched and wrote the book The Facebook Effect, he's actually a very sociable person. And Bill Gates. Okay, he's probably more, falls more into the stereotype and probably transformed the term geek and nerd to something more of a term of pride rather than insult. Um, but it was the jobs. Sorry? It was the jobs. You don't think it was Bill Gates at first? No? Okay, well, to each their own opinion. But Bill Gates at the same time, even though he was so known to be not the most sociable person, he was also known to have a bit of a genuine charisma and warmth to him. So to some extent, all of the successful people in the world have social skills. So that brings me to the harsh reality. Unless you're able to master the art of conversation, you'll never truly realize your potential for success. Just remember, behind every successful man and woman is a great network. You think about the most powerful people in the world, they may not necessarily have the biggest bank accounts or didn't start out with it, but they had the largest contact list, the largest database, which they leveraged on to achieve the biggest bank account. So looking at where we are today, though, <laughs> I find like it's going to be more difficult for you to really develop these face-to-face -face networking skills because have we become antisocial? Can I have your number? <laughs> BBMing, tweeting, which is illegal by the way, so you shouldn't be doing it. And even at dinner, you look at tables around here at a restaurant, you see a two-year-old toddler playing games on an iPad. So things have changed. We've become so involved in online socializing, we forget about physically socializing. So I think it's made it more difficult for us to be able to develop the skills. But I think it's fine if you fall into this trap as long as you don't let it affect your real life socializing skills, then you have the best of both worlds. 
So that brings me to what I call the survival guide, because I think mastering the arts, or at least having the basics of socializing and connecting with people is like the art of survival. You need it. <laughs> okay, so be prepared as topic. So if you're going to an event, if you know the type of people who are going to be there or what the event is about, then do your research. Know what company they're at, what's happening in their environment, then you'll be prepared to spark up a conversation with them. If you don't know who's going to be there or you're unsure of what to bring up with them, then simple, have current affairs ready. As long as you brush up on some current happenings, then you can just spark up the conversation with them. You'll be surprised. People won't be really talking about anything serious. You can bring up anything random at all. Make the first move. Okay, maybe intimidating, but if you're the first one to go up to them, introduce yourself, you make a lasting impression. They will remember you. Better for the right one. mutual friend to connect to. You see someone who you want to meet, but you don't know how to introduce yourself to a stranger, then ask a friend to connect to you. And technically you are indirectly making the first move. Get noticed. Okay, so if you're in a group of people and everyone's contributing to a talk, how do you get noticed? Wait for there to be a lull or a silence, an opportunity for you to step in and then give your opinion. The key is, if it's in the middle of a conversation, you, can, you have the advantage where you can think of something interesting to say because you're weighing out all the pros and cons of what everyone is saying. It gives you more time to come together your thoughts and then come out with something really insightful that grabs your attention. Although I think some of you may be too nervous to even <laughs> think about what to say, but at least it gives you that time to work up the courage to say something in between. Listen more than you talk. Ironically, the art of networking or conversation is more listening than talking. Because people actually love to talk about themselves. So why don't you just let them talk more and more about themselves and they'll love you for it. For instance, if they talk about a certain topic, if you bring up one question, don't make it close-ended. Don't say something that requires a yes or no answer. Ask them, some, ask them where they work, what they do, where their career is going to progress, and so on. Let it, and continue, kind of urge them on with like um, little gestures like nodding your head, going, oh, really? Uh -huh. <laughs> Genuinely, make sure it's genuine. <laughs> <laughs> and basically tease out more details with more questions. Um, take your turn. Okay, so this is basically um, kind of if you're in a group, if you see that you know there's a space in there for you to speak, then you speak. But if you realize that you've been talking for a while and people aren't really responding, they're not really nodding, they're kind of drifting off, then it's a cue to kind of make the way for someone else to <laughs> speak. Because some people kind of get uh, taken away with their own thoughts. Think before you speak. Okay, avoid putting your foot in your mouth. A lot of people have verbal diarrhea and they don't think it's what they speak. Who are you pinting? Who are you pointing at? <laughs> <laughs> what has he done? Give me an example. Yeah, so you never know, you may touch on a topic that's so sensitive that it may cause offense. So try to avoid any value judgment type of statements. Hmm. Have an exit strategy. So this can go both ways. If the person you're talking to isn't really interesting you, um, don't drift off midway, like daydream or start scanning the room for someone else because that can be rude. Um, Yes, in Malaysia. <laughs> and don't suddenly say, oh, I see someone I need to speak to, and then and abruptly go up. Because that will make them feel really small. So try and, and, and give a good reason about why you need to go. Maybe a toilet break. Or if you see someone you need to speak to, have a good reason about why you need to speak to them. Like, oh, there's someone really important I need to speak to. I mean, need to catch my boss on something quickly before he leaves, or something like that. But whatever you come up with, just say this. It was really good meeting you, or it was lovely speaking with you, we must speak again soon, and then leave. So regardless of how good or bad the conversation was, at least they don't think it went badly. 
strategy because you want to keep them wanting more. It's kind of like cheating. You don't want to reveal everything in one go. Oh, no. so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, excuse yourself, say something like, oh, it was good speaking with you. I shouldn't take up all of your time. I'll let you get back to so-and-so or whatever you were doing previously and then move on to the next person. So now we move to the don't. That's a big don't. <laughs> don't interrupt. Never interrupt someone when midway in conversation. If you're trying to bring up a point, <laughs> this is a very Malaysian thing. Yeah. If you're trying to bring up a point to do with that conversation, wait for that person to to finish what they're saying, and don't ask, "Have you finished?" <laughs> Because that would make them feel like they should finish even though they haven't. Um, and kind of just wait for them. And if you want to bring up a completely different topic because you're bored with that topic, then just wait. Never interrupt. So, oh, by the way, and then you go off tangent. I know some people do that and it's really rude. Um, and if someone interrupts you, then the best thing to do is the hardest thing. Just shut up and leave it. Like, People lie, wait for someone else to bring up the point again. Don't suddenly bring up a buried point. So when someone interrupts you, talks about something else, and then you go in and go, so as I was saying, blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. Because it can be a bit awkward and embarrassing, and no one really wanted you to continue the story in the first place. <laughs> Don't talk to only one person when conversing in a group. Um, this can go both ways. It can be that you're only physically talking to that one person and you're isolating everyone else around you. Or it could be the topic that you're talking about. If you're talking about something to do with work, work issues of a colleague, but everyone else works in a completely different company. You're already isolating them even though you are speaking to them face to face. So find a topic that is relatable to everyone, that everyone can come to. to. Sorry? You want to isolate them. You want to isolate yeah. when you're in a group of people talking? Yeah. Isn't that a bit rude? Okay, so these are in cases to people you really don't like. <laughs> if you have a point to push. Yes. Can we get me? Uh huh. Yeah, then, yeah, go ahead. But if you have a point to push, but it's only to one person. What about the rest? You want to push that point to them too? No. It depends on the group as well. Okay, so you. Okay, okay. So you're saying that maybe in a heated discussion with yes. someone and you're trying to prove a point and you kind of forget about everyone else around you because you're really trying to prove that point. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Okay, but how do you get to that conversation in the first place? Because obviously it's an isolated conversation in the first place. So what I'm saying is avoid that to begin with. Well, it is a, a, a meeting which you will not have a choice of Oh, it's a meeting. Okay. It's not a meeting. Okay. I'm talking about in the social, social events. <laughs> in a meeting, do what you want. <laughs> okay, don't be competitive or try to show off. Okay, this can make for a very annoying conversationalist who tries to be superior by one-upping their stories or I've got this better thing and so on. It, 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 it's kind of like a people repeller, so try not to do that. Don't fear silence. Um, what may seem like a lifetime of silence to you is actually probably just a few seconds to the person you're speaking to. So don't suddenly have your mind racing with thoughts like, what do I do now? Is it so quiet? Just relax and... Get ready to move on to the next topic. Or if you're starting to feel really uncomfortable in this situation, then make your graceful exit strategy to the new, to the next person. Don't overshare. I know you met many people who may fall into this category. You, within seconds of meeting them, you know their life story, why they're divorced, why they're losing their hair, why they won't get promoted. And, sorry. How many cats you have? How many cats you have? How do you even hey. get to that topic? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Ali, she can tell you how many cats she has. I'm talking about meeting strangers. <laughs> so, yeah, it, you act, it's as if you need to be in agony, aunt, or you're supposed to, you feel sorry for the person and you just want to run in the other direction. You don't want that. It's all about building connections and building relationships. At the same time, don't pry into their private lives unless they want to share. Don't talk politics or religion, because everyone's got differences of opinion, you don't know where they lie, and maybe you'd like to have that heated debate, but it can cause a lot of tension, and you end up not making that connection, because you end up <laughs> clashing and being enemies, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you don't like to network and connect yeah. with people. <laughs> I told you to give all my help. So if you're out right there to pick a fight, then yes, do all the dope. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing with number six. But that's the thing about politics these days. Yes. Uh, who knows there might be there might be most of the people in Malaysia that has the same opinions. The same opinions in politics. That's fine, that's fine. Not when you first meet them. Yes, Build that relationship, build that connection, uh, where, where you're able to comfortably discuss that at a later stage. But not when you first meet someone and that's one of the first topics, because then you burn that bridge in case they aren't on the same page. But you can find out beforehand and then... Oh, if you find out beforehand and you know, then that's fine. I mean, by, by crying, in a way. How do you find out? Oh, research beforehand. No, 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 no. <laughs> yourself. So the next social event that you go to, 
make the first move, go up to someone and start a conversation because really it's practice makes perfect. The more experience you have, the more comfortable you are in this type of situation and think about any topic at all, like current affairs or current phenomenons like Jeremy Lin, a lot of people are talking about that. Um, and any topic that's interesting or can just initiate a conversation. But just remember to exude confidence. Embrace all people, not just the right ones. Don't think I want to talk to the most popular people in the room, the CEO, the chairman, because everybody wants to talk to them. So build a relationship, build a network with everyone, because every connection counts. Uh, make eye contact. Uh, don't drift off while they're talking and look for someone else in the room to talk to. Like, listen intently, don't get distracted. And stay in touch with people you meet. Because you made that connection, it's up to you not to lose it. There's a lot of people who make the connections and never again do they get in touch with them. So next time you think about networking, just think of it as connecting with people. Get rid of the formal term networking. Because once you think connecting with people, it makes it more like a natural thing that you can flow into, regardless of how antisocial that you may be. It's just a first step, step by step, and slowly it'll flow naturally. So that's it for me today. Thank you and happy choosing.